Welcome to Mrs. Taylor's Terrific Tips for Solving Exponential Log and Power Functions. Watching some of you work, I realize that some of you are getting confused about why we use logs and exponential functions and kind of what's the whole point as we're solving these equations. So recall that at the very beginning of teaching you about logs, I gave you this little equation. I said 10 squared equals 100. And I said we could write this in log form as log base 10 of 100 equals 2. And we spent a great deal of time going back and forth between these two forms. Could you go from exponential to log form or from log form to exponential form? The reason that's so important is when we start to solve exponential and log equations, it's absolutely essential that we can go back and forth between these two forms. For example, let's say that I want to solve an exponential equation. When I want to solve an exponential equation, so maybe I want to solve an equation that looks like this, um, 3 to the x equals 10. Notice that the x is in the exponent position. I need to solve for x. How do I get the x out of the exponent position so that I can do something with it, so that I can figure out what it equals? The only way to get it out of the exponent position and in a position that I can solve for it is to use logs. There's two ways I can do this. Number one, I can rewrite it directly into log form. Notice here's my base, 3. My exponent is on the other side of the equal sign, and 10 is the number inside the log. So this is log base 3 of 10 equals x. Look at this. Now x is right where I can solve for it. I've actually already solved for it. x is now calculable. I can say log base 3 of 10 on my calculator, and I know what x is. The other way of doing this is to take log of both sides of the equation. Log of 3 to the x equals log of 10. This allows me to use the power property, which says now I can bring the power outside of the log and finish solving. So now I have x equals log 10 divided by log 3. It turns out that log base 3 of 10 and log 10 divided by log 3 are exactly equivalent to one another. I don't care which method you use as long as you use logs to solve an exponential equation. Do not make the mistake of thinking, oh, I can just bring the x out front because I'm allowed to bring the exponent out front. No, you are not allowed to bring the exponent out front unless it is a log property you are using, which means you have to use logs first. You have to take the log of both sides first, then you may bring the x out front. So using x to solve an exponential function, I have to get that x out where I can see what it equals, and the only way to get that x out is to use logs. Now. What if I want to solve a log equation? So maybe I have a log equation that says something like uh, log base 3 of x equals 14. Well, x is inside the log. I can't do anything with this x. It's not an exponent. I can't just bring it out front. Don't try to do that. But I can't get to it. It's inside the log. It's trapped in there. How do I get it out? I have to go the other direction. I have to take log form and write it in exponential form. So I have to say 3 raised to the 14th power equals x. Now x out there all by itself where I can solve for it. No problemo. Now you might say, OK, but the problems you gave us are a lot more complicated than this. Well, yes, they are. You might have something where two logs are added together, like log of x plus 5 plus log of x minus 2 is equal to 10 or something, all right? Your goal is to get it down into an expression that has one log with a base and the, some, some expression with x inside equal to something. Your goal is to get it down into something that looks very similar to this, so you can write it like this. So in this case, log of, I need to multiply these together. If I multiply x plus 5 times x minus 2, I end up with x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 10. Then 
This is a log base 10 because it's, an, it's just a regular log. So now I have to do 10 to the 10th equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now, you still have to subtract 10 to the 10th from both sides, and this is a quadratic equation. You'll probably have to use the quadratic formula. This is a big mess. But you have to get it down to log, one log of something equals something, and then you have to put it in exponent form, or you have no prayer of being able to solve this. Similarly, what if I have an exponent thing that looks like this, maybe uh, 10 plus 5e e to the negative 2x equals uh, 3 or something like that, okay? So I need, um, actually that would not probably work. Let me make this uh, 20, all right. So I would have to, I need to get down to something to some power equals something. So I need, my goal is to get this part all by itself. All right, so I'm going to subtract 10. I'm going to have 5e to the negative 2x equals 10. Then I'm going to divide by 5. Then I'm going to have e to the negative 2x equals 2. Now I'm in the place where I can do my logs. I can say uh, log base log base e of 2 equals negative 2x. But I hope you're sophisticated enough to realize log base e is natural log. So this is natural log of 2 equals negative 2x divided by negative 2. There's your answer. Or take the log of both sides. Natural log of e to the negative 2x equals natural log of 2. I can bring this out front. Negative 2x times natural log of e equals natural log of 2. The nice thing about using natural log of e is natural log of e is just 1. So I have negative 2x equals natural log of 2. x equals natural log of 2 over negative 2. And then you've got your answer. So moral of the story. Get down to one base raised to one exponent equals one number, and then rewrite it in log form. Take the log of both sides or rewrite it in log form. When you get a log, get it down to one log, one log with one base of something equals something, and then put it in exponential form to finish solving it. Now what about the old power, okay? Power. You don't use logs for power functions. So let's see here. What if we have uh, 3 times x minus 2 to the 1.4 power equals 5. All right. The exponent is not x. See, if the exponent is x, the only way to deal with that is logs. But if the exponent is a number and x is the base, I am not using logs. This is a power function. I want to get the power by itself. Okay, so something raised to the power. You may not distribute the 3 because this has an exponent on it. The exponent keeps that 3 locked out. This exponent is only related to x minus 2. This exponent has nothing to do with the 3. So I need to start by dividing everything by 3. I have x minus 2 to the 1.4 power equals 5 thirds. Now I need to undo this exponent so I can get the x. It's trapped inside. I need to get it out. How do I get it out? I have to remove this exponent. How do I remove this exponent? Use a reciprocal power. 1 over 1.4. That will always work. So 1.4 times 1 over 1.4. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. That equals 1. So this ends up just being x minus 2. I get this number on my calculator, whatever it happens to be. Notice I'm not really doing any of the calculator work. Then I'm going to add 2 to both sides, so plus 2. So you end up with x equals this number, whatever it is, plus 2. Okay, so power, use reciprocal powers. Exponential functions, use logs. Logs, rewrite it in exponent form. Make sure you can go back and forth from one form to the other. But you don't go back and forth from one form to the other until you get it down, to, until you isolate the base with its power, till you isolate the log, till you isolate the part raised to a power. Okay, so you isolate that part first. Once it's isolated, then apply the, the solution, or the solving method, I should say.